Today's video is going to be a tutorial to help you understand brine soap and to give you the knowledge that you need to answer one of the questions on the expert exam that the guild uh, offers. So let's go ahead and jump right in. What is brine soap? So brine soap or Zolazeife soap, which is a German word, is basically soap made with salt. But instead of adding the salt at trace, like if you were making a traditional salt bar, what you are doing is you're adding the salt to your lye water solution and letting that salt dissolve. So you're getting a salt bar or the benefits of a salt bar without the scrub um, of a traditional salt bar. Now, of course, this comes with um, some knowledge that you need to know and understand to calculate how much salt you can use in your recipe without having, with, basically so it will all dissolve. I first made a brine soap probably five or six, maybe even seven years ago, and I read about someone making it online. I don't even remember where, and I thought it would be cool, and of course, so I tried it. Um, it was just a learning experience for me. It wasn't something I was ever going to, I think, do, like, incorporate into my soap. But, uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I had seen more and more people using salt in their soap, either seawater or creating a brine solution. And so I started to just kind of go back and do more research. And there's a lot of videos and blogs and information out there. And I found that you got bits and pieces from everyone, but not quite a full picture. So I wanted to create this video and kind of go into depth about the difference between seawater versus creating a brine solution, um, the math to calculating it and all of that to hopefully give you a good understanding and kind of bring all that information that I've seen into one spot. So a brine soap can also refer to soap made with seawater. You commonly will see that called seaman soap. In fact, if you do a search for that, that's generally what will come up is is salt is a soap that someone has made with seawater. So seawater has a salinity of roughly 35,000 parts per million. So this is equivalent to 35 grams of salt per 1,000 grams of water. So what that means is the concentration of salt in seawater is 3.38 um, weight W slash W, which is um, your weight per weight, basically. I'll get into that in just a minute. So why do I mention this and why is it important to understand the concentration of seawater? Well, because the concentration of seawater is, of salt in seawater is pretty low. Like this is a, a relatively low number, which means you can make a recipe, your standard recipe with seawater, and you really don't have to change much. There's not enough salt to kill the lather. It also gives you, you can still work with it so you can do designs. It's also not going to get rock hard um, like a traditional salt bar that uses a high concentration of coconut oil. So there's a lot you can do with seawater soap, so to speak, um, incorporated into a regular recipe, cutting it like normal without having to worry about it getting too hard and all of that. So let's back up a minute and, and go over some of the math. So what does W slash W mean? Weight concentration of a solution is expressed as a percent WW. This stands for weight over weight, weight slash weight. I'm not 
100% sure of the correct terminology on that. Um, I always just call it WW. So what this means is percent WW is equal to weight one divided by the total weight times 100. So weight one is the weight of the compound. In this case, it's going to be our salt. Weight T is the total weight. So it's weight one plus weight two. So it's the weight of the salt plus the weight of the water, our total weight. Now, you are going to basically, you can do this math and it will give you um, the percent or the concentration of soap. So how, let's apply the math. So salt can dissolve about 357 grams in roughly room temperature water. So 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius. So if your water can dissolve that much soap or that much salt, the question is how much salt uh, is that? So if you apply this formula, it will help you figure out exactly the concentration. And once you know the concentration, you can determine how much salt your water can hold for each recipe. So in this case, weight one is the 357 grams, that's our salt. The total weight is gonna be the 357 plus 1,000 grams, that's how much, um, that's your grams per 1,000, that's how much can dissolve into it. So we're going to take 357, divide that by 1,357, and then multiply it by 100. And that is going to give us a concentration of 26.3%. So what that means is that our water can hold up to 26.3% salt and fully dissolve. Anything more than that, and it will not be able to dissolve in the water. It will just sit there as um, undissolved salt. Why is this important? Well, if you want to dissolve all your salt in the water, you obviously need to you, you can't add more than the water can dissolve. So you need to know how much can actually dissolve in the water. So the saturation level of salt in room temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit water is about 357 grams. If we had boiling water, um, it can hold a little bit more, about 391 grams. However, once that water cools, that salt, that extra salt we've added into that hot water is going to precipitate out because it won't be able to hold it. So these are the concentration percents if you're interested in knowing how much salt can actually um, dissolve in water at room temperature and boiling water. So why is this important? Why do we need to know the saturation level? Well, because we're taking our water and we're trying to con dissolve two components into it. We have the lye, which is going to be dissolved into our water, and we have salt. <laughs> so you have to figure out how much water is required for your lye, basically, and then remove subtract that amount of water from your total water and then you can figure out how much salt the water can the remaining water can dissolve so what i do um, one it simplifies calculations and two it ensures that all of your salt will dissolve is i round down the salt concentration to 25 percent basically soap can hold or I'm sorry, the water can dissolve 25% of our salt. Even though technically it can dissolve 26.3, this will just make things simpler. But you can calculate it both ways, off of 26.3 or off of 25%. Let's look at an example. So a recipe calls for 10 ounces of water and 3 ounces of lye. So we know that the the concentration of fly to water is 50%, right? We can dissolve three ounces of lye in three ounces of water. That one's 
pretty easy. So we're going to take our 10 ounces of water and subtract 3 ounces of lye. And that's going to give us 7 ounces. So we have 7 ounces of water remaining that we can dissolve salt in. Because 3 ounces are already used basically to dissolve that lye. So we're going to say we can use, we can dissolve up to 25% of salt in the remaining seven ounces of water. So just set that up as a simple formula, seven ounces times 25%, and that is going to give you 1.75 ounces of salt. So we can use max 1.75 ounces of salt in our lye water solution. If we use more than that, it's not going to fully dissolve. That's all that means. Is that the end of the world? No. You might have a little bit of actual salt in your recipe. If you don't care or don't mind about that, that's, again, not the end of the world. But I wanted to <laughs> explain how you're going to calculate how much salt your recipe can use. Now, when I use salt, when I want to create a brine solution, I use what we typically term full water or 38% concentration, um, which is generally the default for most lye calculators. I do this because if I use less water, then I'm going to be able to use less salt. So when I do this, typically these bars, I'm um, the full water really doesn't make a huge difference because when I make a brine soap, I am using a recipe that's either 100% coconut oil or very high in coconut oil. And so it creates a super hard bar anyways, and that extra water does evaporate out to even make it harder. So I don't worry too much. Um, if you're doing a kind of seawater solution, um, then you, can, you don't have to use a full water concentration. You can definitely use less um, because again, there's a lot less salt in there. So let's look at the differences between seawater and a brine solution. It's going to make a difference. There is a lot less salt in a seawater soap than there is in a brine soap if you're using the full amount, if you're using a 25% solution. So if we've determined that seawater has a lye concentration of roughly 4% and the saturation level of salt is 25%. That's a big difference. Why is this important? Well, salt makes a hard bar. It also kills lather. So the more salt you have, the harder your soap will be, but um, you're probably going to have less lather. It's going to potentially kill the lather of the soap. can also make it hard to cut. So making a brine soap in a loaf mold is not always the best idea and sometimes you're going to need to if you do want to do that you might have to pay close attention and cut it four or five six hours after usually it sets up pretty quick um, more salt also means you likely need to adjust your recipe you can assume that you're going to need a recipe with a high coconut oil content which means coconut oil can be drying you're going to probably need a high super fat to follow that so Seawater's, the 4% the solution is, is very low, so you can make a normal recipe and really not have to worry about changing things up. I, I've played around with it and I've, I've actually kind of enjoyed <laughs> um, making them. It was like I could make my normal recipe, the soap did get hard, um, the lather was still okay, and it kind of has a nice... I don't know, kind of creamy feel to it. Uh, just a few things to consider. I think I've mentioned most of these. Is It's going to be hard to cut a high coconut oil soap, so individual cavity mold versus a loaf mold might work better. Um, you probably aren't going to have a lot of time to do fancy designs as generally um, coconut oil, coconut oil, high 100% or recipe high on coconut oil is going to trace pretty quickly. Also, again, we're coming back to cutting. So if you're trying to do a loaf mold and cut in a pretty design, it might not happen. If you're using a recipe with a high concentration of coconut oil, you're going to need a high super fat. 
Um, generally, it's recommended around 20%. That's what I use. Coconut oil is very dry. It creates a great lather, but it will strip the oils from your skin. So a higher super fat is needed um, for a coconut oil soap. And one last note, I do not recommend using dead sea salt. It's more mineral than salt. And I find it, in, it makes my bars mushy. They just get soft and mushy and, and they just don't turn out right. So you're going to see a video shortly. I have tested three recipes because I wanted to see just the differences between a brine soap versus a seawater soap and just compare like lather, hardness, all of that. So the first recipe I did was 100% coconut oil with a 20% super fat and 25% salt. The second recipe, I used 30% coconut oil, 70% other oils, I did an 8% super fat, and I just did a 4% solution. So I was basically doing a seawater soap. And then the third recipe, I did 70% coconut oil, 30% other oils, so still really high coconut oil. I did a 20% super fat still because of that high coconut oil content and I did another true brine soap with 25% salt concentration. So that is what I'm going to show you now. How I made it, the, what I discovered while making it, um, some tips, also a little bit about the lather and my notes over the month of it curing and testing it. This is the recipe for uh, soap one. So if you wanted to try this on your own, you're welcome to use this recipe. Um, this is for a little over one pound. This gives us actually like a 20 ounce batch. So I determined, obviously my, I did my recipe. I ran it through the lie calculator, determined what my lie was, which was 2.35 ounces. So from there I took my water, 6.1, I just rounded it up from 6.08, won't, won't make a difference. Subtracted that from the lye, that left me with 3.75 ounces of water that I could dissolve salt into, so I simply multiply that by 25%, so I just converted that to 0.25. So in this recipe, I could use 0.94 ounces of salt. That's how much salt my water, remaining water, could dissolve. Recipe two, was a traditional recipe. Again, you can these make a nice recipe. You can use them if you want. This is just what I tested. And same concept, I take the six ounces and 6.1 ounces, uh, subtract the 2.21 five ounces of lye, and then that left me with a remainder of 3.9 ounces of water that I could dissolve water in. Now this was just a seawater soap, so I only had a 4% um, salt concentration. So all I added to this soap was 0.16 ounces of soap. So, so our salt, sorry. So it was a small amount of soap being salt being added. And then the final recipe, again, uh, take the total water, subtract the amount of lye I needed, and then take the remainder of water, multiply that by 25%, and that gave me 0 0.99 ounces of salt. I rounded it up to one ounce um, that I could use in that recipe. These are the questions that you will see if you do the expert exam. Our recipe calls for 10 ounces of water and four ounces of sodium hydroxide. If making a brine solution, what's the maximum amount of salt that can be used in the recipe to ensure all the salt and sodium hydroxide is dissolved in the mixture? So again, just go back to the math that we did on all of those questions. Subtract four from 10, that leaves you with seven. Take seven and multiply that by 25, uh, 25% or by 26.3%. Um, and that's going to give you your max amount of salt. So again, pretty simple. You don't have to do anything more than that basic math. So hopefully that helps you and enjoy the rest of the video of making my brine soaps. If you have questions, please let me know. Also, I have created all this information into a handout. 
everything you that's in that handout is in this video so you, you don't need to buy the handout but if you like to have a hard copy with the notes that you can refer back to I will list the link um, below but you can purchase the handout as well we've gone over the what we've gone over the math and now we're going to make soap so I am going to make the three batches that we discussed in the previous part of this video so I have my recipes and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure out the water then I'm going to measure in the salt I am just using regular table salt you can use most salts, again, the one I avoid, I would say avoid, is dead sea salt because it's more minerals than salt. I've labeled the bottom of my containers one, two, and three, so I know which batch goes with um, each soap. So I'm going to measure out my water, then I'll measure the, lot, the salt, and then the lye. So for this first batch, it's going to be 100% coconut oil. I am going to be pouring it into these individual molds because it's going to set up very quick and cutting it will be very hard. So I'm not even going to bother. It's going to go in there. Same thing with batch three, which is mostly coconut oil. Um, batch two, which is going to be our kind of seawater batch and a normal batch should be okay to cut. So I'm going to pour it into a loaf mold. We'll make these and then I will kind of show you what they're like after 24 hours. I might come back and check actually after 12 because I suspect these will be hard. Then I will test them each week. Like I'll see how they're going and then we'll test for lather and just to kind of see what the bars are like. So I'm going to measure out for the water of this recipe I need 6.08 so I'm going to measure 6.1. So the salt, again, we did the math and we can accommodate, our water will be able to dissolve basically 1.94 ounces of salt. I'm sorry, 0 0.94. So I'm going to measure out basically 0 0.9. It's not a lot. And I'm simply going to pour that in and stir to dissolve it. See, I don't know if you can see. Um, They're still salt granules, so I'm just gonna stir and I'm gonna set this aside to give it time to dissolve. I'll come back, stir it some more, but while I do that, I'm gonna measure out the other two batches and then I will come back once everything is dissolved and measure and add the lye to the solution. But I want to get the salt fully dissolved before I, I do that. Okay, so batch two is our kind of normal batch, our seawater batch, not really a full brine or whole life soap. So water-wise, I need, again, same amount, 6.1 ounces. Salt is so. 
So I need one, 0 0.16 ounces um, of salt. That's 4% of our, our solution. So it's a very small amount, but this should be equivalent to um, salt water. And I measured out a tad too much. <laughs> Now this should dissolve much easier because there's less. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that in. You can see it's much less milky. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see on the bottom all that that white spot. That's the salt. And again, I'll set this aside, give it some time to dissolve. And our final batch. Again, same amount of water, 0.99s, basically one ounce of salt. Okay, so just add that in and stir. I will come back once these are dissolved and we will add the lye, lye to the water. The salt is dissolved. The water is definitely a little kind of murky, but the salt is pretty much all dissolved. Um, it didn't take long. I would say five minutes tops for it to dissolve. And I could let it sit longer and it would probably clear up a bit. Um, this is the one with the least amount of salt. So you can see it's, it's the most clear. Uh, I will, so now that those are done, I'm going to measure out the lye, grabbing my glasses and eye gear and gloves for when I work with the lye. So batch one needs 2.35 ounces of lye. I'm using my heavy duty plastic spoon. When I mix a lye, I did use um, the metal spoon for the salt, but I never use metal with lye. You can use stainless steel, but I don't. So I am going to slowly just add this in to our mixture. That actually, I know you can't see because it's gone cloudy, but it actually feels like, like the lye is dissolved, mostly. Um, so I'm going to set that aside and let that cool. So batch two requires 2.21 ounces of lye. So while the lye is the lye solution is cooling on these, I am going to prep the oils for each of these soaps. Um, I'm especially with the coconut oil soap. Normally, I would let these cool between 90 and 100 before I mix my soap. That's just how I work. Um, but for the 100% coconut and the almost 100% coconut. I'm 
especially since I'm not doing any type of design. I'm not even gonna add color. I'm just gonna add fragrance because I wanna test a couple fragrances to see how much they discolor. Um, and since I'm pouring them straight in the mold, I am not gonna worry too much about getting my temperatures down. Um, and these are such a small batch that I'm just gonna mix and, <laughs> and then pour them into the mold. But yeah, so basically it looks and feels like the lye has dissolved in all three of these. The salt is dissolved, so let me go prep my oils and then we'll be back. I'm back. Okay, so you can see this is batch two. It cleared up all nice and, and clear. This one kind of like it has a frost um, on top, both of the ones. Now, you could strain this as you pour it. I have one of these stainless steel. Honestly, I've added this in just like this, and I've never had any issues. Um, I think it's just kind of a, the salt. And the water is almost at its capacity but you can like I said if you want to strain it you can I just think it is part of the salt in the mixture but there's there's nothing in it it just kind of has that cloudy um, top so I'm gonna set these aside so I don't knock them over this is hundred percent coconut oil so this is batch one. Uh, it is super fatted. I don't think I mentioned this earlier. At 20% because coconut soap can be very drying. So we want to kind of add in some moisture. So I'm going to go ahead and, and you can see like I strain this, but it goes right through it. There's like almost nothing in the strainer. So I don't get too worried. Um, try and hold this up. It's kind of created this spider webby look, and if you like mix this, it it doesn't look like it looks granulated on the on the spoon, the spatula, which basically means this is not at trace. So I'm going to stick blend some more until I reach trace. Okay, so not only did this fragrance massively discolor this, it also started to rice on me, which I was not expecting. Um, I don't know if that's just the nature of the fact that this is 100% coconut oil and a salt bar, but holy cow. Okay, so this is starting to get super thick. So I'm going to go ahead and... Wow, is that an ugly color. I really hope that fades. <laughs> um, I'm going to pour it into my single cavities. Um, I don't think we have to worry that we've, we've reached trace at this point. And that is just... Wow, that color is awful. That is not a pretty color. If nothing else, this fragrance is behaving beautifully. We'll see how much it discolors, but that is some a lot of stick blending, and we've only just really reached a medium trace. So that's cool to know. That has reached solid medium trace. I don't know if you can see, but it's leaving a nice thick layer on top. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pour this one into the bowl. So this bar should set up basically like a regular bar and I should be able to cut it tomorrow morning. I'll check on it this evening to see um, if I need to, if it's getting too hard and I should cut it tonight. But I'm, I'm thinking that I should be able to cut it 24 hours later. Okay, we're down to the third batch. So again, this is the one with um, a full salt, 25% uh, salt. So it's got a, again, that kind of just filmy top. So I'll pour that in. So this recipe is also super 20% super fat. It's 70% coconut oil and then shea butter and olive oil. So basically not a true full coconut bar, um, but we've added in a few other oils. Um, mostly again, salt kills lather, so in coconut can lather in salt water. So that's why these, um, we did one, the 100% coconut oil, and then this one is uh, predominantly coconut oil because we want the bar to lather. The super fat is because, again, coconut oil can be drying. We don't want it to do that to our skin. So we super fat it a whole lot so that it will lather and be moisturizing. And this bar should be rock hard as well. Those are my three test batches. So you've seen how I've made them, what I've done. The next, like I said, step is I will come back today, later tonight, this evening. So about 12 hours later and look at the hardness of these. Like I'll, I'll sit there and like basically like Literally, I'm putting my finger on this and it, it's not moving. Like these bars is from the first batch we did, which was what, five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, are already like firm. <laughs> like they are, I could push harder and I would displace it, but it's not going to nicely go back together. Like I would have a fingerprint in the soap. So it is definitely setting up. Even this one. Um is setting up and partly that's because I did stick blend it to a thicker trace um, but these are definitely um, I want to I said monitor how hard they get so I will check on that over the I said the next the rest of today and tomorrow we'll come back and I'll unmold with you so you can see their hardness. We'll cut that batch. And then, like I said, over the next couple weeks, I'm gonna monitor their weight, how hard they are. Um, and then I'll test them as well. And we can see how they lather. I will, <laughs> how long they last, they should last a long time. I don't know if that will actually make it in because I'd have to wait for the cure and then test them and use them for the length of however long they last in my shower, which might be a long time. So that might come back as a footnote, but there you have it. Soaps are made. So <clears throat> it is, Less than 12 hours later, this is batch one. It is raw, like I am squeezing so hard, it's rock hard. Like if you threw that at someone, you could do some damage. This is batch three and it's not rock hard, um, but it like, it's definitely getting there. And then this was batch two that we did in the loaf. And I'm actually going to unmold and cut this now because I'm pushing on it pretty, pretty hard and it is like 
I'm afraid to leave it until tomorrow morning. Like normally I would not cut this quite this. Like I said, I just think tomorrow morning will be, we'll see if it comes out of the mold. Um, just under, it would be about, I think, let's say 20 hours. And I'm kind of afraid that it might be too hard to cut with my wire cutter. So you can see it definitely didn't unmold well. So that's still soft. Um, this mold is not my favorite, but it's a one pound mold. Um, and I probably put, should put gloves on for that one. Um, anyways, I'm going to cut it. It won't be the prettiest on the bottom, but that's okay. They're test bars. This is not like they're good. Okay, so that actually cut really easily. It's the inside. Um, it's it cut easily, but like I'm pushing on this. It's not misshapen, <laughs> so. The bottom might have not quite have been completely there being in the bottom of the mold, but the rest of this was not too bad. I'm going to leave this together like this. So I'm going to leave this together. I am not going to actually, it's cut. It's fine. Tomorrow I can separate it, but I'm just going to leave it together for a little, like I said, a little while longer. Um, yeah, it's just going to stay in the paper towel. So this one, like I unmolded this one. I told you these are rock hard. This is the 100% coconut oil. This one, it's still not coming out perfectly clean out of the mold. So I think, like I said, and it's still kind of soft, not soft, soft, but not hard, hard. So. I'm just going to leave those and I will unmold them tomorrow. Okay, so it is about oh, almost 30 hours, hours after I made these. Maybe not quite 30, but as I had said, this 100% coconut oil was rock hard after like four hours and it's still rock hard. This 70% coconut oil, 30% other oils with a 20% um, super fat and a 25% brine solution. This one's like, I don't know, if yesterday evening it was still a little soft, but now it is, it's rock hard. Not quite as hard as this one, but it's, it's hard. This one, which I took out and cut because I was afraid it was getting too hard. It's actually, it's, it's harder than like my normal batch without salt in it, but it's, it's still soft. Like I could, could squish this if I needed to. So I probably could have left this in here in the mold until this morning and cut it then without any issues. Um, so lesson learned. I could definitely wait on that one to unmold it and cut it. You can see um, that fragrance discolored. This one, it's not awful. It was a nice white when it started, but not too bad. And then this fragrance discolored yellow. So I was just testing them. They have absolutely nothing to do with the soaps, but they're going to go into cure rack and I will keep track of how they're like hardness for the next couple weeks and present that in a little chart. And I will also test them at various stages. So probably at one week, two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks, and see how the lather is, the feel is, how drying or not they feel, and make some conclusions from there. <laughs> 